Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supply. Today we're going to look at the new Elite Ember. Now this bow is a bit unique for me because it's basically been targeted at the Elite female archer. I'm going to say that and also the Elite Junior Archer. So someone who's basically growing or someone who is looking for a lighter bow. Now that's quite unique in the whole archery industry as far as I'm concerned and so I want to look at this bow and I think this bow is a bit unique for Elite too so I want to talk a bit about this. Now this bow is adjustable from 15 inches to 29 inches in draw length and it's adjustable from 10 pounds to 60 pounds. It comes in teal, which is this colour here. It also comes in blue, it comes in camo, and it comes in black. Um, price in Australia is about $920 from memory, and that depends on how the Australian dollar is going, whether it's up or down, or how it's floating at the time. At the moment, it's all over the show. Um, in America, I think it sells for about $450 American dollars. So, Axel Axel, 31 and a bit. Uh, brace height, I'm oh, sorry I wish I could remember, but it's pretty good. Um, brace height is six and a quarter, speed of 310 um, and 3.6 pounds. Um, it comes with a twin cam system, so the top cam and the bottom cam are identical with a rotating module, and this concept is new for Elite for 2020. So in the old Elite bows, you had to fit modules to the bow to change it. And frankly, that was a bit of a pain in the butt because you need a bow press to take the strings off and it'd take about 20 minutes to fit strings, replace the bow and re-time and fit the peep sight to twist the peep sight around so it all made it fit. So the rotating modules made it a lot simpler for the archer and for the archery shop in setting up the bow. So I'm going to show you what it comes with. It comes with this packet here and what's in this packet here is draw stops. Now they fit onto the module, onto those screws there, and it actually hits the limb at that point there. So there's a stop there. So you screw these bolts, these stops screw into there and it hits there. Now because it's a twin cam, you need the top cam and the bottom cam to be timed. Oh sorry, it also comes with a hat. That's the hat there, whether you like it or don't, that's the hat it comes with. Um, now it has yokes, so what you need with a yoke system, you need this cam to be coming back completely straight. So basically test it and you can just put an arrow down the side of the cam, just like that. And you can kind of see if the, you can see, I'm hoping you can see the arrow tracks in line straight with the string. Now if, the, if these yokes weren't timed, so if there was too much twist on one side or the other, you'd see the arrow be at an angle like that or like that. Um, and that affects how the bow tunes. So if these cams were tilted, basically the arrow would come out moving left or right. So, and that would move the RRS left or right for the tune. So this is a machined riser, which is good. Metal limb pockets. Um, these are the same limbs you see on pretty much all bows. These are the Gordon Glass limb. Um, the graphics. They look nice to me. These are limb saver um, silencers. Um, I'm looking for a lower mount hole here. There's none, so if you want to fit a lower mount stabilizer, or a sidebar, or V-bar system, there's no place to do that on this bow. So you're gonna have to fit a front, a front stabilizer version if you're gonna do it. It has two holes here for your RRS to bolt it on to stop it moving. You have the two spots to screw your side on. Um, now I'm gonna say, so I set this up for my girlfriend. I basically wanted a bow which was light for her that she could get into the sport with and try. So this bow to me was, it was blue, teal. Um, it looked pretty, it was light, 3.6. And yes, I would like lighter for a girl getting into the sport. Um, better basically tick the boxes. This is a straight cable slide. Some of the more, some of the more elite elites, the more expensive elites have a roller slide here. But there you go, some of the expensive ones like the Echelon, is it? They have this slide here anyway. So, um, so I'm gonna say when I adjusted the draw length with, with this bow, it's got two screws here. I found it very hard to know what code here 
related to what draw length. It's not in the manual, I don't think it's in the manual, I didn't open the manual so it may be in the manual, I didn't check. But I found it very hard to know what size here was relating to what draw length. And in fact when I pulled this bow back, I thought I had the module in the wrong setting because the bow was rocking over, one, one wheel was hitting, the, hitting before the other and it felt absolutely terrible to do. And I've actually shot this video twice. So the first time the sound cut out, so the first 20 minutes of the video, the sound cut out at the end, so I'm having to redo it. But it felt absolutely terrible. Now I've timed this bow, so I basically twisted up the cables to make these cams timed, and the bow feels great. So ideally what I'd like to see on this bow is timing marks here on the cams, so you can see basically where it should be timed to give you an indication. Now, probably you can see there the gap, and there the gap. But originally when I was fitting this module, I didn't, I didn't know if I had them both on the same marks. I found it a little bit confusing and you can kind of see here where the module ended um, down here and there is a mark there that's just before the five there and it should just be before the five, before the five there. So I thought I had a ride but it was rocking quite badly and so that was straight out the box. So basically with that, so I found the setup was a little bit more, it was harder than I thought it should have been. I would probably like there to be pins or something in these modules so it clicks into place. Um, and I'd probably like some timing marks on the cams to give me an indication of what's timed and what's not. Um, the bow itself is nicely balanced as you can see. It's just sitting there in my hand. Um, the grips, the grip feels nice. It's different to the new Elite which starts off thin and goes thicker. Um, it's a narrower grip which I'm actually comfortable with because this bow is built for smaller people with smaller hands. So it's not built for your seven foot tradie with, with you know, gigantic hands. This is, this bow feels comfortable to me. Um, the paintwork looks good. Um, you can see it's got some black marks there, but overall the bow looks fantastic. Now, what does this bow compete with in the market? Actually, I can't find much in the market to compare, compare it to because it's a bit unique. Um, I'm going to say it probably competes with cheaper bows like the Bear Cruiser, um, but I don't even think that's a fair comparison and maybe you think it is. Um, because this is a machine riser with metal limb pockets, good quality limbs, string stops, and the Bear Cruisers, you know, goes out to 70 pound where this is 60 to, to 10. Now I'm going to ask a question what this bow shoots like at 10 pounds versus 60. Um, but what I did is I wound this bow down and you can see in here how far you can wind it down so you can actually see the limb bolts. So that was pretty good. Um, so how did my girlfriend find this bow? She found it quite heavy to start off with, the physical mass weight, even though it was 3.6. Now, when the bow was not tuned, she found this bow easy to shoot and she was shooting tight groups straight off the bat with it, even though the bow was not, not tuned. Um, so since then I've tuned it and she hasn't shot it since. Um, and I'm doing the second video with it now. So with that, let's go and shoot this and see how it shoots. Okay, so I had a customer phone me up and he said, I want to buy a bow for my partner and money's no object. Now is money really no object? So I said this would be the bow I would choose if money's no object. Now I'm not sure money was no object for him. However, saying that someone then did order this bow. So maybe he did buy this bow. So the first thing I want to talk about when you select a bow for your partner, and you've chosen which color she wants because that's really important or you're buying a bow for your kid, set the poundage as low as possible to start off with because it's got to be easy for them to draw back. Set the draw length a little bit shorter than where you'd expect because you don't want them drawing it past their ear because basically the poundage will be too hard to draw as if the draw length's too, too long. So start off with the too short, so maybe even have it come to the front of their nose. And I even don't mind if they bend their arm to have the string touch their nose. But I'm gonna to talk to you about how I set up a bow to get my partner to shoot and things I teach to get them to shoot straight, straight off. So the most important thing is your hand grip. I want these knuckles at 45, I want no touch in here. And the bow just, just sits at that point there. 
And what I always say to people who are starting off in the sport is this is your lifeline. You can see here, something happens to me, this points downwards. So it's like stop, and this is pointed down here. So you don't want your lifeline pointing into the side. And what this does, if your lifeline's pointing to the side, you're gonna whack your arm, it's gonna hurt. And she, or the kid, is not gonna wanna shoot. So if it's pointing like that, you can see I've got a massive gap there. And it stops the bow from talking on when you pull the bow back, stops the bow from derailing when you pull the bow back. If you grab the bow like that, I call this a clenched knuckle grip, you run the risk of derailing the bow when you draw the bow back. So it just pivots in your hand like that. And what this does, this hand here does the aiming, not this hand here. So that's the most important thing. Um, now the arrows I chose, these are little cheap carbon arrows. These are from Skylon. Um, you're gonna say, why did I pick these arrows? These are a spine of a thousand. So we've gone for about a um, 30 pound bow, let's say 27 inches. Um, and I've changed the knock. So I've gone for a um, large groove knock because they come with small groove. Um, I've fitted a basic D loop to it, a matching peep sight. And you can see here it's got no rubber. So I've had to twist this string to get this lined up. And that's a bit hard if you don't have a bow press. Um, so if you didn't have a bow press, I'd fit a rubber to it. So let's have a shot. Now the release aid I'd recommend, I'm shooting a back tension, would be a wrist release aid and you keep the finger behind the trigger. But let's just have a shot and see how I find this bow. So the draw cycle is very smooth all the way back. I can't... I can't feel the bow peaking, so it basically, so from here, it feels the same panage all the way back and it just hits the valley there. There's no valley at the end. So when I say there's no valley, it hits the valley, but there's no distinctive valley. Now, if you fit those draw stops, it's gonna be harder at the end. So when I draw this bow back, that's the stop. I find it pretty rock solid and I don't feel the need for a limb stop on this bow. So let's just have a shot and see what it feels like. So when I draw the bow back, I want the string in the middle of my nose. Now for me, as opposed to my partner, the peep sight will be a little bit lower because she's a bit smaller than I am. So let's just try this. So I have the, I have the string touch the middle of my nose, touch there in my hand under my jaw. That's what I teach. Um, Now when I shoot this, it's nice, there's no vibration, there's no noise. A lovely bow to shoot. Now I'm obviously not doing a, a complete bow test with this bow that I do normally at 60 pounds at 29 inches. That's because this bow is basically set up for a lady to shoot and that's why I wanted this bow, bow review to be, be about. Now you can just see it's nice and easy, it's an easy bow to shoot, it looks good, feels nice, no vibration, it's a rock solid draw stop back there. Once I timed the cams, when I didn't time this, time this these cams, it felt absolutely terrible. Um, now she didn't actually notice the difference, but for me I did. Um, so just be a little bit careful with that. But I find that really nice and the group down there, there all the arrows are touching. So start off with a nice light arrow, get the speed. You don't want to shoot a heavy arrow. You don't want to spend you know $1,000 on a bow and then shoot $5 arrows through it. These are $8 arrows, they're nice and light. They shoot really well. Um, Now I'm going to say basically the $8 arrows that I'm shooting, I could opt for the, I think they're $8, $7, $80 a dozen, $7 arrows. Um, I could opt for the $10, $9 arrows, but I didn't feel the need. Like I just wanted to have the whole shooting thing, get in the motion, have the muscles, get the panage right, get the draw length right. 
and these arrows were fine. So that's the Skylon Novice, the Skylon Radius and the Model Up, and they're the ones you cut to size. Um, same knocks, same points, but you cut the arrows down. These arrows come pre-glued the points. So overall, I like this bow. Um, I didn't enjoy the, I didn't enjoy adjusting the draw length on it, um, but overall, a really nice bow. They haven't served the um, cables through the cable guards, so maybe you will get wear. I've got my first um, PSC Supra, wasn't served through here. My first PSC Expression wasn't served through here. I didn't get any string wear, some people do, it depends how much you shoot. I thought I shoot a lot, obviously not as much as some. Some people will probably get wear here, I don't, I don't think it's an issue. It's nice and smooth all the way back. The cams are big, which means it's going to be nice and smooth. To me, this is clearly a step up from the, bear, from the bows like a Bear Cruiser, the Mission Craze, that, those sorts of bows. Um, it's longer axle axle, 31 inches, easy to shoot. But it is, I will take the, the point that it is twice the price. Um, it's got good cams in here, they've got the bearings in the axles. It's a good quality bow and to me at the $900 as Australian I don't think there's anything in the market which is kind of similar to it and someone's going to say well how about the diamond carbon bow. I don't know, I don't sell diamond. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how reliable they are. So I'm not saying they are reliable or aren't reliable. It's just a product I, I can't compare. So, um, but this, I can't see why you'd ever have a problem with this bow. It's just rock solid. It's over engineered for the poundage of this bow. And when I say over engineered, you know, these limbs, there's just no tension on them at all. So they're not gonna break. They're quality limbs that you see on all the bows. They've got these little things here. So if you dry fire the bow, it stops the limbs breaking. The metal, metal limb pockets, machine riser, it's, it's got everything it's, and the limb stops down here to create that rock solid so if you want to reduce the lead off so if you don't want so much lead off and to me it probably feels like about a 75 80 percent lead off when you get back here it's not big you know some bows when you draw it back it's 90 percent lead off you feel like you're holding nothing it's a bit scary to let it down this bow is not like that it feels nice but if you want less let off, use the draw stops to do that. Just move them forward a little bit in that draw cycle, just a smidge, and you can get that complete lock in. Um, but overall, I like the way the bow's built. I like the colors it comes in. Maybe it could have done, they could have done it in a more girly color. And you're gonna say, what's a girly color? Like, I think the teal's nice, whether it's for a boy or a girl, but I don't know, maybe you could have done a nice green. Um, Someone's going to say pink, but um, more color options would be good. I'm always a big fan on lots of color options, but overall, I really think Elite have hit a winner in 2020 with their bows. That's the result. The uh, Cruise, which the Cruise, Crutz, Cure, the Cure. The Elite Cure, uh, which I haven't done a review, review on yet because I've been waiting months for them to come in. But the Ember, I am a big fan on after just shooting it once or twice and I will do a full review on this bow at 60 pounds, 29 inches, shoot it through a chronograph and let's see how well I shoot. The arrows down there are all touching one another so it was pretty good to me. Now as a beginner, just shooting that with a basic D loop. You can see the peep's not tied in, so the peep doesn't, doesn't fly out at minimum bow poundage. So you can't really wind this down any further. You can see the gaps there. Um, so you're gonna say, well, this bow is adjustable to 10 pounds from 60, and you've got this bow wound down as much as you can. I think what you'll find is when you shorten the draw length, you'll, you'll reduce your poundage also. So just bear that in mind. So at 29 inches, it won't go down, down to 10 pounds. It's at 15 inches, it won't go up to 60 pounds is my gut feeling on this bow. And that's pretty standard across the industry. Um, but overall, nice bow and I think Elite have really done well in 2020. And I think this bow in particular, given the price point, I think it's really good value and it's not aimed at the beginner. 
So if you're a beginner getting into the sport, you're probably gonna wanna buy half the price of this um, to get into the sport. But then if you're in the sport and you're wanting to make that step up, this bow, the Elite Ember, should be right on your radar as far as bows to try. Um, I think it's beautiful, I love it. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies, the Elite Ember, give it a go at your local archery shop, and the more you shoot, the better you shoot. Thanks for watching, bye.